Hi, this is Julieta Yang Orfiano. Welcome to my video. If this is your first time on my channel, please like, share, and subscribe so I can notify you if I have a new video. This is the continuation of part 4 about the cash and cash equivalents. I discuss in part 4 about cash management. Just click above or the link below this video to watch part 4. In this video, I am going to discuss about the Petty Cash Fund. Petty Cash Fund, as discussed in the foregoing section, effective control over cash and ideally requires the adoption of the impress system. Under this system of cash control, all cash receipts are deposited intact and all cash payments should be made by means of checks. However, an enterprise considers it inconvenient and impractical to write checks for such small items as taxi fares, newspaper delivery charges, postage, express charges, and minor supplies. A company usually pays for these kinds of items from a petty cash fund. An impressed petty cash fund is established for a fixed amount and allows a company to effectively control small amounts of cash fairly simply. The fund works as follows. First, a responsible employee is designated as petty cashier. A check drawn payable to petty cash is encashed and the petty cashier places the money in the petty cash fund which is often kept in lock box or petty cash drawer. The check which establishes the fund is usually for an amount that the company estimates will last for two to four weeks. Journal entry for the establishment of the petty cash fund is as follows. Debit petty cash fund, credit cash in bank. Number two, as time passes, the petty cashier disburses money from the fund, but only upon authorization of a responsible officer designated to authorize payment for the fund. To request payment from the petty cash fund, a petty cash voucher must be prepared by the petty cash custodian. The petty cash voucher are sequentially numbered so that they could be easily accounted for. The voucher must be signed by the approving officer and must be returned to the petty cash custodian for payment. Upon payment, the petty cashier keeps the petty cash voucher and he shall have it signed by the person receiving cash. Any receipt or invoice supporting the payment must be attached to, to the signed voucher. Ideally, at any time, the remaining bills and coins and total amount of the petty cash vouchers must equal the amount at which the petty cash fund was established. The company does not make journal entries at the time petty cash is disbursed as the petty cash vouchers are still with the petty cash custodian. Number three, when the amount of cash in the fund is low, the petty cashier submits the signed petty cash vouchers and accompanying receipts and invoices to the general cashier to request for reimbursement. Reimbursement is made equal in amount to the sum of the petty cash vouchers submitted. The reimbursement, therefore, is for an amount that will increase the amount of bills and coins in the fund to its original amount. The replenishment of fund is recorded as debit expenses, asterisk values, and credit cash in bank. The asterisk represent as any other appropriate account title or titles. Number four. At year end, prior to the preparation of financial statements, an adjusting entry is made 
to recognize the payments from the fund that are not replenished. This adjustment likewise updates and brings the petty cash fund general ledger account to an amount equal to actual cash items in the petty cash fund as the balance sheet date. This would avoid understatement of expenses and overstatement of cash. This adjustment is usually reversed at the beginning of the ensuing period. Year-end adjustment is recorded as follows. Debit expenses, various asterisk, credit petty cash fund. The asterisk represent or any other appropriate account title or titles. Number five, in instances that the amount in the petty cash fund may be deemed inadequate to satisfy the company's needs, the fund balance is raised and the following journal entry is made. Debit petty cash fund, credit cash in bank. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you learned something from this video. I did part 6 and continuation of this video wherein I discuss in part 6 about the cash short or over. Just click above or the link below this video to watch part 6. Don't forget to like Share and subscribe on my channel so I can notify you if I have a new video. Once again, this is Julieta Yam Arfiano. See you on my next video.